The UN Blue Helmets have been responsible for North Mali's security since 2013. And they have paid a high human cost. Just this year, 20 peacekeepers have been killed. This is the world's deadliest ongoing peace operation. The head of the UN peacekeeping mission in Timbuktu is Ricardo Maya. Very positive. And, uh, and although the whole compound is heavily fortified, he too has been the target of militant attacks. On the 14th of August, there was a team of terrorists that attacked the compound. One uh, fired into my office space. And in fact, as a souvenir, I still keep uh, some of the maps I had there. You can still see some of the old... These were bullet holes. These were bullet holes, absolutely. They've gone through here and up. I mean, we were very lucky because uh, I had left my office uh, seven minutes before. Uh, my colleague who was with me and uh, actually works with me all the time, he was in the office, was laying on the floor with his bulletproof jacket on him, and he was also quite, quite lucky. Uh, luckily, one was killed uh, while he was trying to penetrate into my office and two more were killed at the doorstep of the canteen. Do you think if you had been there and wearing no body armor, you would have been killed? Well, you know, there is one bullet that went through my chair. Huh? And here it is. You can see it's probably like this. So it's, uh, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> so, yes, um, I honestly feel I was uh, one of the priority targets and that would explain why my office and only my office has been sprayed with the bullets. The threat of attacks is always present in Timbuktu. There are more than 13,000 UN peacekeeping troops stationed in Mali. This Swedish unit provides drone surveillance, a technology increasingly used by Western armies in the region to track the enemy. For a UN convoy on a patrol, that means some added safety. Lieutenant Colonel Anders Landewall is in charge. The IED threat, according to our information, is uh, increasing uh, in the area now. We collect information. Is it terrorist activities in this area? There is uh, uh, extremely complex, as I said, and also dangerous situation now in Mali. Today, Colonel Landewall's reconnaissance will help scout the way for Ricardo Maya's peacekeepers. <laughs> As the chief of the UN mission in Timbuktu, Ricardo sometimes plays the role of diplomat. Other times, of policeman. But almost always, he is a target. Today he will show us what peacekeeping is, when arguably, there's still no peace to keep. We are headed to Aglal, a small village 30 miles from Timbuktu. The mission is to deliver a water pump. Mali's northerners have long complained about the lack of development here. And the UN hopes these missions will aid in meeting their needs. In order to reach Aglal, our convoy of more than a dozen vehicles and over 50 soldiers must first cross a river and then drive through treacherous desert. Armed groups and jihadists take refuge here. Terrorism has increased Timbuktu's isolation. Some soldiers in the convoy are from the Malian National Army and cover their faces. 
as hostilities from the armed groups in this region may affect their families if they are recognized. In a country deeply divided among ethnic lines, where multiple tribes have different cultures, languages and political agendas, the challenge for stability is great. Even the soldiers working together in the convoy identify themselves by their tribes. The boat's journey ends and the threats of IEDs begin. Jihadist planned improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, on the roads here to specifically target the UN's vehicles. It's an hour to Aglal. With a convoy this size, it's impossible to fly under the radar. You know, we're trying to speed up a bit because uh, in this area, speed is also security. Yeah? If, uh, you know, if the threat is the one of a remotely controlled IOD, it's uh, more difficult for the ones who are waiting for you to detonate at the right time if you manage to speed up. So the people we, you are giving the water pump to are potentially the same people that could attack as well? Uh, not the same individuals, we think, but uh, they could have the same ethnic background or they could have uh, some family affiliation or links. Aglal is finally in sight. After a tense journey, a warm reception. Aglal only has one well that is shared among residents, livestock, and the little agriculture that exists in what feels like a sleepy village. For Tuaregs, the nomadic ethnic group that live here, water is life. And the promise of a water pump fuels goodwill towards the UN. But just across from the well, an armed checkpoint manned by local MNLA members proves control of this area still belongs to the rebels. On peut filmer? Alors la question c'était justement si c'était un checkpoint et pourquoi vous vous devez avoir un checkpoint armé ici. On voulait savoir la raison. Euh, le checkpoint, premièrement, c'est pour la, la sécurisation de la population, en particulier de la commune en général. C'est quoi la situation de sécurité par rapport euh, Qu'est-ce qu'ils pensent sur ça la, la sécurisation, bon, pour le moment, le, les checkpoints font de leurs de leur possibilités pour mener une, sécur, une sécurité normale. The local elders send a strong signal by welcoming the UN and officials from the Malian army to feast together. <laughs> they also let Ricardo speak to the community about what he cares about most, building trust between the UN and the village, and ending the bombings against the UN patrols. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Ricardo Maya, je viens de l'Italie. Le MINUSMA est ici pour accompagner le processus de paix, mais la paix se fait, est faite par les communautés. Elle est faite dans le cadre du Mali et avec les autorités maliennes. 
Et c'est à la requête de Hameli, qui est venu me rendre visite euh, il y a presque deux ans, comme je le disais, que nous avons amené aujourd'hui un, une petite contribution symbolique pour l'ensemble de la communauté. C'est une euh, motopompe de 10 chevaux. Ça doit permettre l'irrigation d'une bonne dizaine d'hectares. Si le chemin est entrepris, les autorités maliennes et la MINUSMA s'engagent à faire leur côté. C'est une pompe de la paix, c'est un symbole. Si les moissons sont bonnes, il y aura un suivi. Mais il faut que les problèmes sur la route de Bambara s'arrêtent. And so, eight hours after our arrival in a convoy of armored vehicles, with drone surveillance monitoring our every move, the water pump exchanges hands. Aglal's elders follow up with a surprising gift of their own. Le taureau il s'appelle Italia. Italia. Italia, As we ride out of town on a wave of cautious optimism, it is evident just how much effort a small step in the right direction takes. I'm just wondering if there's any sort of frustration for you to realize the sort of manpower it takes to deliver, you know, one water pump. We were in a convoy of about uh, 50 um, men. Uh, we sent an helicopter beforehand to check on the road. Uh, we have a second... Uh, military deployment that is on the road following us. Yes, it has a cost, but it's an incredibly much smaller cost than the cost of the war. I think the yardstick you want to use to appreciate the day we spent together is not so much the water pump, but is what that means for the people that we reached out today. Many of them never had the opportunity to travel out of their village. Uh, very many of them never met with an international actor or with the Mayan authorities. Uh, so this was the big development for the community today. You don't build security with weapons. You build security with the social cohesion, you build security with the Mayan state presence. I think this is a way of doing counter-terrorism, and this is the way that the UN can do best.